Hey there guys, welcome back to the deck profile with yours truly, Paul Reisman. Today we are taking a look at Dalton's Zeban list from our recent feature match. Let's dig right in. This session brought to you by Odyssey Games for pre-orders and sealed product, CCG Prime for tons of singles and supplies, Cardo Doco for international rulers looking for products, and FoulLibrary.com for articles and wonderful deck lists. As well as our guest lecturer members, King Pearlshine, Vite Ramen, Mog Knight, and Darren Noblock. Class is in session. So Zeban, the Malefic Star, uh, we were wondering when number seven would show up, and he's finally here, and he is a doozy. Uh, he is teaming up with uh, the Malefic Tree, Yggdrasil, the uh, Malefic Verdant Tree from all the way back in Echoes from the New World. Uh, one of the very, very, very first sets in uh, Force of Will's history. We're starting to get into the middle of the history at this point. The lore is super cool around this ruler, especially because he is fighting uh, Leneth, who is somehow in this world. We're not exactly sure, but this is the extension rule. So let's go back to Zeban. He's got a couple of interesting God's Arts on his front side. Uh, his first God's Art allows you to get a regalia from outside of play and put it into the field, right? Once during this turn, you may play a regalia from your removed area. He has the same for a resonator. So you can do this uh, for anything that has been removed from play. And what's really helpful is that Yggdrasil uh, replaces the damage that you would take for uh, moving one uh, one card for every 100 damage into the RFG. Uh, you and your opponent cannot gain life. And now that you have cards in the RFG, if any of them are named uh, Machina, King of the Accursed, uh, Rezard, King of the Damned, Melgus, King of the Black Flame, Arla, Demonic Flying Ace, you can play it uh, from outside the game for a green and a black. You are probably not going to be doing this in Dalton's list in particular because uh, he's not playing any of those cards. Yggdrasil is here to just make sure that Zeban doesn't die. And so uh, this deck is going to be very different in the way that you would normally construct something because you're going to be losing cards from the top of your deck. However, uh, Zeban has a ton of cards that work with Dark Tree. Um, the big win con of the deck being Pathetic Demise. You can play this only if your ruler is Zeban, and for every seven kings ruler you have outside the game revealed, you pay two less to play this. And so if you have seven, it only costs you a black and a green. Um, and I've seen him pull this off. It's very funny <laughs> to just be like, I win the game now. Um, and I know, like, he was playing against his son at one point, who's uh, playing Wolfgang's Demonic Worlds, and all he did was get rid of all of his Demonic Worlds, which is really funny <laughs> as well. <laughs> anyway, this card is super fun. Um, it's a starry skill, so you can only use it with Zeban. But this is a real reality for the deck, and I'm going to show you why. Next up, we have his uh, Regalia Satellite Maze Star Cyborium. Uh, which can flip into Zeban Administrator of the Maze. It's got Quick Cast. Uh, when it enters, you not only draw a card, but you reveal a Seven Kings from outside the game. And if you have uh, enough Seven Kings revealed, you can reduce the seal on this down to uh, however much you have in terms of stones, and then you can contract into uh, the J Ruler side here, which has Flying, Bane, uh, minus two, minus two for each seven kings revealed outside the game. Astonishingly relevant. Uh, this is probably one of the um, the main reasons to play the regalia is that if you get it to this side, it's very, very, very strong. Uh, when it enters, it also reveals. Um, so on both sides, it reveals the seven king, and then uh, it has the god's art to shuffle all non-magic stone cards from your removed area back into your deck and then you draw two cards. Um, so this is essentially um, everything that Tree wanted to do in older formats, uh, just kind of printed onto one card um, with uh, the fact that your deck is essentially your life. Uh, you can shuffle all of that back into your deck and you're good to go. So Zeban is kind of like this really helpful J Ruler package. Um, the contract is really helpful as well. Um, and it just looks flipping cool. So now we gotta look at the other support that we have here. Uh, Malefic Wind is a reveal on top of a cancel. Um, so this is a really helpful way to say to your opponent, uh, you don't get to play the game right now. 
uh, Zeeman's Troopers. Uh, these things are amazing too. If they successfully enter, you cancel and enter ability your opponent controls on the chase, plus they don't get enter abilities for the rest of the turn. So it's like Abdul plus a silence for enter abilities, which is really strong. Um, it's quick cast and it's 7-7 seven, seven, and you can pay black to put it from the graveyard into the field, which is really fun. Um, so this card is absolutely amazing, especially in this deck, um, because there's a lot of times in which uh, if you have cards in your graveyard like this, um, it's essentially just going to get shuffled back into uh, uh, into the deck once it's removed from the field. So this thing is amazing. Uh, I don't even know what else to say. <laughs> this card is just absolutely fantastic. Uh, another really fantastic card is Wicked Spirit of the Malefic Tree. Uh, I thought, uh, because I didn't read closely enough, <laughs> if you do this unreveal effect to make him cheaper, all you have to do is play pay one black not one black less it's just one black and then when he comes in it's enter draw a card your opponent discards two cards oh by the way he's a 10 10 uh, very scary card very powerful card um, this card is amazing if you can get it to uh, into the RFG which is really important and then you can just flood the field with 10 tens uh, very fun uh, very very interesting uh, we also have uh, the Hopeless Scream, uh, draw two, and then it's a minus eight, minus eight to your opponent's board. Uh, if you do end up meeting the seal requirements, you look at your opponent's hand and choose a card to discard. Um, that's really good. <laughs> it's really, really, really good. Um, it doesn't have quick cast too, so that's really helpful in dodging things like Ferris Spell. Uh, we also have uh, Terminus of the Seven Kings. This card is so good because of what the Seven Kings rulers do. Um, so essentially, uh, you can select a Seven Kings ruler um, you own revealed outside the game. Uh, keep it revealed, and if you do, uh, you put a Resonator token copy of its J ruler side into the field. Its God's Arts are even cheaper. And so we have... Um, those down here. Most of the time you're going to be choosing to get Faria or uh, perhaps even Melgus. Uh, and the reason you do this is because you get a magic stone uh, put into the field and that that is such a huge boon, especially when this deck wants to ramp. Uh, the fact that these rulers uh, did this back in the day was, you know, pretty good. It was a, it was a good way of, you know, making the judgment feel strong. Uh, this card essentially now just says you get to ramp and get a body all at the same time, depending on what uh, ruler you choose. And so there are some decent, um, some decent ones in here you might want to choose. Uh, Faria is probably one of the best cards you can choose to ramp. Um, and then, I mean, there's just tons of really, really good stuff here. Um, so Terminus, uh, Terminus is pretty solid. Um, we were a little scared of this on the channel, but I don't think that that's necessarily um, as bad as we might have thought. Uh, it's, it's certainly okay. You only have a couple of targets that are really worth the time to actually play this. Um, all of that being said, though, it's it's a solid card. It's a solid card. It's a little scary to some degree, but um, uh, just, I mean, it's okay for Zeban to have strong cards, so I'm pretty neutral on this right now. Uh, we also have Shadows from the Malefic Tree. Um, Dalton is running this because he's running some other cards in this package that are a, a really interesting. Uh, so this generates tokens. Uh, you can put two 4-4 four, four, uh, Ethereal Resonator tokens into the field. If there are three or more Seven Kings revealed, you can put three 4-4s four, into the field instead. Um, they are going to be banished at the end of the turn. Uh, but they're a really good fodder to feed into Sacrificial Altar, which recently got unbanned. Um, I'm still not sure about this card, you know? <laughs> like, I'm not sure if they should have unbanned this thing or not. Uh, but the fact that you can, you know, put uh, for two um, at quick cast speed, uh, just play this on your opponent's turn, and then uh, just have them all get sucked up into the altar... And then you just get a, a two or a three drop or whatever, you know, however many counters you have. It's a decent card for ramping up your altar, which I think is interesting. Uh, it's also interesting to play this in the last end step of your turn to get three four fours to be able to swing uh, and deal a bunch of damage to your opponent that way too. Um, this thing is going to be nuts under Institute. That is all I'm going to say. 
Uh, we also have Malefic Tree Ethereal. Uh, some of the coolest art in the set. It's a Bane 3-3 three, three, and it gets plus two plus two for each Seven Kings ruler you own outside the game. Uh, so you on enter you get to reveal a Seven Kings and then you get to put two four fours, uh, your four four tokens into the field. They will be banished at the end of the turn. But once again, I mean, this thing is just a beat stick, and those tokens can just get filtered right into Sacrificial Altar, which he's playing at three copies here. Um, arguably, he might want to go up to four, because um, it seems like he really loves the idea of Altar, and I think he's going to be doing that here pretty quick. He's playing two Gyrian, uh, which he can make off the Altar. This card is absolutely insane. Um, the fact that you can turn one gear in in some decks is going to be uh, really relevant to the altar package. He's also playing one hook, which he has definitely gotten off in games where I've seen him do this. And oh my gosh, it's so funny. Because now hook is also unbanned. Um, which is, <laughs> again, just really silly. Um, you can uh, stonewalk your opponents. Um, you can bounce their stuff back. You're probably stonewalking your opponents, especially if you are ahead in the game. Card's just good. Um, the 10 10 body. Um, getting to 5 on altar is not hard to do in this deck at all. Uh, he's playing 2 Essence of Athena's Power. Uh, this is really helpful if you have a bunch of stuff in the RFG, but you want to horn your stuff back into the deck. Um, it also really messes with your opponent's graveyard. You've actually seen it in a couple of the games, maybe, where he essences my, my graveyard as Branhart, and that really puts me in a weird spot. So this card is actually really powerful um, and does a lot of really interesting things uh, in certain matchups. And he's also playing two horn to shuffle his graveyard back into his deck. Um, really powerful for tree decks in general. He's also playing a couple of copies of Alisaurus Invader of God's City for zero. You can put this card on the top of your deck, so if your opponent manages to deck you out, uh, you have another card to draw so you don't uh, you just don't die to um, the game state situation. But all of that being said, um, there are small ways to get around that. Um, and so uh, you got to be careful how you use this card. He's playing the Brad package. So four Brads, uh, four Conflict of Memory and Soul, and he's playing two Roar of Dark, uh, three, sorry, three Roar of Dark Blessing down here. Um, so this is a really good way of making your opponent's hand advantages go away. Uh, if your opponent is smacking you, you're going to be getting uh, all of your brads, or at least several of your brads, into the RFG, which will then just go right back to your hand in the end step. Um, this package is an interesting choice for Tree in the sense that um, Brad is a is a strong package, but it is indeed a package, and sometimes you got to pick and choose. Uh, whether or not the Brad package is right for your deck. So uh, time will tell to see if he can maintain the Brad package in this list. Um, I'm one of those people, I, I'm not a firm believer in Brad, so my list is going to look very different without this. He's also playing two of the Stone Monument to search for his Brad. Uh, Stone Mon Monument also searches your Alisaurus because Alisaurus is a human, which I think is really cute. Uh, he's playing three Lorite. And uh, after talking about our, our videos uh, together, uh, he's going to actually up this to four because he wants to see Lorite more often and be able to play from the RFG with Zeebin's effect. Uh, he's also playing two Rezard because he wants to do some atrocious uh, war crimes in his games. So this is quick cast, so you can cast it from outside the game using uh, Zeebin's effect if he's there. Otherwise, if he's in your hand, uh, you can pop him out that way. You can also do it with Alter. Um, so with Alter and um, your Shadows, this turns into uh, a free uh, a free Rezard for you to play. Um, cards in your opponent's car uh, graveyard lose all of their abilities, which is fine. Um, but whenever another creature uh, you control is put into the graveyard from the field, you put it into your owner's hand. And that's where Recon Drone comes in. Reconnaissance Gears is here. Uh, you reveal... Uh, to put it into the field, it gains the enter ability banish this card, and then you can choose to give something plus two plus two. And of course, uh, because Zeban is a Gears ruler, uh, you can just put that card back in your hand in combination with Rezard and just do that infinitely. Um, which is a cute little infinite. I really like it. It's kind of funny. Um, 
<laughs> but it's also like, oh hey, yeah, gear support. Oh yeah, that's the thing. Um, we're so focused on Dark Tree, I forgot gear support was actually useful in this list. In his Magic Stone deck, he's running four Moonshade. You're, uh, you know, in theory, you are not taking any damage whatsoever. Uh, and so you're going to have plenty of life to filter um, into the color that you need, potentially. He's playing four uh, Darkness Moon Fragment for the for C. Um, really strong in this deck. You need, you need to be seeing as many cards as possible. And he's playing two Ataractes Memoria, so it's going to be a Darkness and Green Stone for that. And of course, uh, in the sideboard, he's just playing uh, all of the Seven Kings. Um, if he had a sideboard outside of this, I'm wondering what he would play. I would imagine something like, um, especially, especially in the Branhart matchup, playing uh, some Red Witches would be really helpful for him. And so, uh, so yeah, I mean, the deck was super fun to play against. Um, it's always nerve-wracking to play against Tree because Tree is such a interesting and annoying deck to play against. But... Uh, Dalton piloted it super well. Let us know what you think of the com in down in the comment section about what you think about this list. Uh, we're going to be bringing you uh, more deck profiles like this in the future after feature matches, so make sure you subscribe and hit that like button if you'd like videos like this. Anyway guys, this has been Paul. I'll catch you in the next deck profile.